Okay, you guys, and this is the big finale. I saved the best for last. I'm so proud of myself. I mean, I say I can't believe it. I believe it. I use this product literally every single day. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today I have a good old fashioned empties video for you. These are products that I've used up all the way or mostly all the way. And I have a really good idea of my thoughts about them. And I wanna share those thoughts with you. If you enjoy these types of videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It helps me out a whole lot when you do that. And I will link everything down in the description box, especially if it's a good product. By the way, uh, just try to disregard this giant Band-Aid on my hand. I got a brand new knife set for Christmas, which is awesome. And for some reason, I thought it was smart to cut a vegetable while holding it in my hand with these brand new, very sharp knives. <laughs> so that was great. So we're gonna get right to it. I have a lot of products, so I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna start off with skincare. A lot of these skincare items I've either mentioned on my channel before, or you've seen them in past empties videos. So I'm not gonna like take too much time to talk about them. The first one is the Pharmacy Honey Moon Glow AHA Resurfacing Night Serum. Amazing. I've been using this for years. It is a beautiful treatment for nighttime that really smooths your skin with AHAs, which is alpha hydroxy acids. It gives you like beautiful baby skin when you wake up in the morning. It is quite strong. So if you are interested in using this, you would wanna just like slowly incorporate it into your nighttime skin routine, but I love it. I use it like every third or fourth night, depending. Highly recommend this one. And this one, listen, okay, I talk about this nonstop, so. This is the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. This is my all-time favorite nighttime moisturizer. You put it on, you wake up in the morning, and it's as if you had just put moisturizer on. Your skin feels hydrated, plump. It's very affordable because a little bit goes a long way, and it's unscented. It's just a really, really good hydrating night cream. Highly recommend this one. Highly recommend this one. And by the way, I will talk about if I will repurchase these things or not. I will repurchase this till the day I die. Okay, I will. And I've already repurchased this. I bought during the holidays when Pharmacy did a little kit with a few of their products. I bought it and this was in it. So yes, yes, I will repurchase that. I already have. And then I have three cleansers to talk about. Two of which I've talked about on my channel numerous times. So this is the Oat Cleansing Balm from the Inky List. This is by far my favorite cleansing balm for a few reasons. The first is it comes in a squeezy tube. Either a squeezy tube or a pump is the ideal situation for me, especially when I'm washing my face. There's water, there's makeup all over the place. I don't really wanna have to dunk my hand in a jar. It's too, it's too messy. This packaging, great. Also the price point, this is $9.99, love that. Now the scent of it isn't great, okay? It, it doesn't have a scent added, which means it smells kind of weird, but I will look past it. I will look past it for $9.99 and it works well to take off all my makeup and I always go in with a cleanser afterwards anyway, just to get off any other residue that may be just kind of lingering. It works great. And then I have two more cleansers. This is the Pure Skin Face Cleanser from the brand First Aid Beauty. This has makeup all over it, so I apologize because I'm reaching for it as I'm washing my makeup off. Again, this is by far my favorite second step cleanser in my skincare routine. This is just gentle, unscented. I feel clean after using it, like there's no residue that's left behind, but it also doesn't strip my skin, make me feeling super dry. It's really good. Like, it's just really good. I don't know what else to say. It is a little bit more of a pricier item, but to me, it's worth it. I just really enjoy this more than any cleanser I've tried thus far. And by the way, if you're new here, my skin type honestly goes from one side of the spectrum to the next. I usually have more normal skin, but it's been leaning pretty oily the past few months, but I've been adding this other thing into my skincare routine that has been drying my skin out. So like today, my skin feels like parched dry. So I don't know if that helps you and gives you any sort of reference or if that just confused you even more. Okay. And then I have a mini or a little travel size 
of the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Cleanser. I did cut it open to get every little drop out, which is interesting with the clear packaging like this, you can actually see what's left. So I appreciate that. This cleanser was not my favorite. I'll be honest with you. I feel like it left a kind of film or residue on my face that I don't like. I don't like that feeling and I don't feel like it did a great job as a second step cleanser. More just would use it for a day where you're bare faced or whatever and your skin's dry. Not for me, I won't repurchase it. I've got a couple of hair care products. So I went through two of the intense repair kits from Olaplex and in the intense repair kit, I got this from Sephora, by the way, we have the number zero and the number three. So the number zero is the, it says intensive bond building hair treatment. You're supposed to put this on as a primer for the number three, which is the hair perfector. So your hair is supposed to be able to more easily absorb what the number three is, which is like the bond building treatment if you use the number zero. I mentioned this before on my channel, but I really do feel like the Olaplex products have really helped my hair a lot. I had a crazy thing that happened to me in the summer of 2021 where I had my hair extensions removed and a lot of my hair fell out. It was traumatizing, but Olaplex has really helped my hair a lot. I can tell the difference. I would suggest if you're interested in trying Olaplex to get one of these little mini kits because I probably got maybe five, six uses out of this. Now, again, I have short hair, so I don't need that much product, but it was definitely a good way for me to try these products out before buying the bigger, more expensive bottles. And then I went through an entire Tree Hut moisturizing shave oil, and this is the Moroccan Rose scent, which is one of my favorite scents. It's rose, but it's not super florally. <laughs> this scent I have a really hard time describing, and they don't describe it on the bottle, so it's hard for me to explain, but it's a really nice scent. <laughs> I love this shave oil. I already have another one of these going in my shower, but I have the coconut lime version, which did any one of you guys ever use the Bath and Body Works coconut lime line back in the day? Because I did. I was obsessed with it. And it was like my summer scent when I was like 20, 20 years old or something like that. The one from Tree Hut doesn't quite smell the same. It actually smells much better than the one from Bath and Body Works. It has more of like a more mature, like grown up scent to it. I don't know how to describe it other than that. But anyway, this is a great shave oil. It's wonderful. It moisturizes my legs when I use it. It makes my shave really clean. Wonderful. I just really love this product. And then I have two body washes to talk about. I will talk about this one first. This is probably one of my most favorite body washes. I really do repurchase this over and over again. And the great thing is they sell this at like Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls for a very discounted price. It is just a good, plain, moisturizing, which is important, moisturizing body wash that both me and my boyfriend can both share this. It doesn't have like a super perfumey scent. It's very just neutral, you know? Very soap, just like the Dove soap. It just smells like Dove soap. That's exactly what it smells like. And it's just good. And it has a pump, love that. Love that. Big packaging, pump, affordable. Love it. Have one in my shower going already. Okay, and then I have this Clean On Me from Soap & Glory. Now, I remember having this a while ago and I really liked it. The scent of it is very nice. I will say that. The scent of it is very nice. It's a very clean, little bit perfumey, but it doesn't linger a lot, which I prefer. I don't want like a body product that the scent lingers like crazy. I'd rather wear perfume. The thing I don't like about this, and I got this in a gift set. So maybe it's different in the gift set than it is in just the regular standard one that you buy at the store. The pump on this is terrible. Like it would squirt out the littlest amount of product. So I'd have to sit there and go for like ever, just to get this to have enough product in my loofah to be able to use it. Listen, that is a minor problem, okay? Really, it's not the end of the world but just mentioning it. I do like this. I'm not gonna repurchase it just because, I don't know, I prefer the Dove one over this, so that's that. This next product is the Liquid Blender Cleanser from Beauty Blender. I got this a long time ago, you guys. This lasted me, I would say probably over a year, this lasted me. Every time I wash my Beauty Blender or my bath, my bath sponge, no. 
my makeup sponge, I would use this and it does get rid of the makeup on your sponge immediately. Like so good. And I've used like regular soaps before. They do not do as good a job as this, in my opinion. I'm not going to repurchase this right now because I have several of the solid blender cleansers from Beauty Blender that work just as well. And I want to work through those first, but I would absolutely repurchase this if given the opportunity. It is pricey, but I would probably try to see if I could get it on sale somewhere, somehow. It's very good. It's a great sponge cleanser. And then I have two nail polishes that I am going to throw out. Now, they're not completely used up, so technically they're not empties, but I'm breaking the rules here, okay? I have Bubble Bath and Big Apple Red. Big Apple Red has been my favorite red polish. I don't even know how long. Years and years and years and years. Anytime I go to the salon and I get a pedicure and I want a red, I would get this. And I would get this so often. I bought one of my own and I like it. But I did recently just talk about I have purchased the Butter London nail polishes and I much prefer them over the OPI nail polishes. They last longer and these ones don't last very long on me and they're very old. These two are old. That's the main reason. Like I can't even, I can't even open this anymore because it's crusted shut. So it's gotta go. And Bubble Bath is nice. It's actually really, really, really sheer. So it's not my favorite. I prefer more of an opaque nail polish. And this one is just a little too sheer for my liking. So I am going to toss both of these. They're, this one's very old as well. All right, you guys, and the rest is makeup. I went through a lot of makeup products. I'm really happy and proud of myself. So let's get to it. So first of all, I went through an entire Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. This is the second one that I've gone through completely. I'm not a huge setting spray person. I don't use it every time I do my makeup, but there are certain setting sprays that I do really enjoy using. And this is one of my absolute favorites. I feel like this is a good, like kind of neutral setting spray. I feel like if you have oily skin or dry skin, you could use this. It doesn't severely alter the finish of the makeup. It just has a nice, beautiful aerosol mist, very fine. And it just kind of lets your products just become one with the skin. I really enjoy this. I do have, actually I bought a long time ago, the Jeffree Star one, which I'm not a subscriber of his anymore. So I don't care that it's his, but I just did buy it because I think it was on sale and it's scented, which I kind of like it. I like the smell of it. It's like a strawberry scent. So I'm not going to repurchase it right now because I do have another one that's in my collection. Okay, and then I have three mascaras that I am going to be tossing. So I have the, ooh! I have the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I mentioned this several times on my channel, okay? It is expensive and when I bought it, I did not like this for my upper lashes because my lashes are sad, you guys. I need a lot of help. Like I need something that's gonna push my lashes up and keep them there. Usually like lengthening mascaras don't do anything for me. I need like volume and like a dry formula, a curling wand. This really doesn't provide that. It is definitely a lengthening, it's a tubing mascara. Yeah, this is gross, like, it's a tubing mascara. So I love this for the bottom lashes. It kind of defines and separates the bottom lashes. And because it's a tubing mascara, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it stays there on the three lower lashes that I have on each of my eyes. Will I repurchase this? No, because I have found an alternative that can tide me over for a while, but I would consider it if it was on sale. It's expensive. So if it was on sale, I'd consider it. Then I have my most favorite mascara of all time, hands down, is the NYX On The Rise Volume Lift Mascara. It is my favorite for volume, for curl. Not so voluminous that it's like clumpy, but you definitely don't wanna use this if you're looking for that wispy separated effect, no. No, but if you're looking for volume and curl, it is by far my favorite. And like I said, my eyelashes are sad, but these actually make me look like I have some sort of eyelashes. And then I used the Big Mood Mascara from e.l.f. When I first tried this, I was not impressed. After using it and letting it dry out a little bit more, I actually did enjoy using this. The one thing I don't love about this is that the wand, the top of the wand is huge, like huge, huge, huge and it really kind of got all over my eyelid when I used it. But generally speaking, it was a nice mascara. It gave me volume, it gave me curl. It got a little clumpy towards the end as a lot of volumizing mascaras can do, but 
Overall, especially for the price, it was pretty good. Would I buy it again? No, there are ones I like more than this, so no, I wouldn't buy it again. I went through an entire one of my most favorite, favorite eyeliners. This is the Tattoo Liner from KVD, and actually it says Kat Von D on it. That's how old this is. I don't even wanna tell you how long I've had this, but these liners last for Ever. And I wear liquid liner. Actually, every time I do my makeup, I wear liquid wine. Liquid liner. Liquid liner. This is so incredibly easy to use. This is so long wearing. Like I said, it lasts forever. It's very matte. It's very black. I fully enjoy this eyeliner. Would I repurchase? Yes. Yes, I would. But I have one that I'm using now that I think could be a dupe. Stay tuned because it's a fraction of the price and just as good. But yes, I would consider repurchasing this. I absolutely love this liner. I went through a lot of like my most favorite products. <laughs> this is my favorite loose powder of all time. It's no longer available. But when it was being sold, I bought a backup. So I have a backup. This is the Patrick Star and Mac Patrick's Powder. It is all over me. It is the most smoothing, blurring, but not heavy, not drying, gorgeous, brightening powder. It has a slight pinky tint to it, which for me, I love for color correcting under my eyes because I have dark circles, very dark circles, always have, probably always will. This helps me out a lot. I wish that this was still available. It's not, but I'm gonna cherish that last, that last tub as long as I can. But one of you guys did make a good point one time when I talked about it in the comments, you said, well, have you tried the one size powder from Patrick Starr's brand? Because if he created the MAC powder, maybe the one size powder is just as good. And I haven't done that yet. Have you tried the one size loose powder? If you have, can you please let me know your experience with it? I would love to know, honestly. All right, and then I have two single shadows that I haven't used up completely, but they're dried out. So I'm just including them in this because it's all going in the trash. So this one is honestly the only ColourPop Super Shock Shadow that I've reached for over and over again. For years I've had this, I've used it so much. I'm really surprised I haven't hit pan in it. It's shocking to me. So this is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Falling Up. This came out with one of their holiday collections. I wanna say like 2018, something like that, where it was like a lot of rainbow stuff. This is just a beautiful like, champagne with pink glitter in it. Just a very nice all over the lid shade. Gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, but it's dried out. It's crumbly. There's no more of that creaminess to it. So it's gotta go. And then I have one of my Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousses from the brand JCAT Beauty. I do have a handful of these. I love these. They are definitely very creamy, like way creamier than the Super Shock Shadow. It's like a straight up cream mousse. Well, they're called, they're called eye mousses. That's what they are. <laughs> if you are prone to creasing or if you have hooded eyes, you probably wouldn't like these because I can definitely see them transferring or creasing very easily. They take a long time to dry down. And in fact, sometimes when I've used these, I've had to put a powder shadow on top to make sure that it's set. So I do like these. I think they're gorgeous. But this one, again, is dried out. Like it's kind of like crumbly and yeah, it's it's not in a good place. But they are beautiful and they're extremely affordable. I have a few other ones. If you are interested in this type of a single shadow, you wouldn't be disappointed. And again, for the price point, they're wonderful. This one is in the shade Chrome Galaxy. It's just like a warm tone gold orangey color. I'm just so much more of a palette gal. I find it so hard for whatever reason to want to reach for single shadows like this. I just don't think of it. Like I get into the zone when I'm sitting at my desk and putting my makeup on. Like I feel like a hurricane could blow by or a bomb could go off and I would just be so sucked into what I'm doing. Is anybody else like that when they put their makeup on? I mean, I guess I could go before I start my makeup and get the single shadow and put it down. But anyway, we'll see. I went through an entire NYX micro brow pren pren pretzel? Pren pretzel? Ooh, pretzel sounds good right now. 
a NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. This is definitely my favorite drugstore brow pencil that I've tried. I mean, there are still a lot of brands at the drugstore for pencils that I have not tried yet. Give me a suggestion down below. What is your favorite brow pencil at the drugstore? I would love, 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 love to know. I really enjoy this one. It is definitely more on the waxy, not super pigmented side. So if that's something you like, you would like this. Like it's not super creamy. I really like this. I like the color on me. It's a good pencil. It's one of my favorites. I enjoy it. I went through an entire little mini of the Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. I have mine in the shade 25N, light, medium, neutral. Love this. I especially loved this before my skin was oily when it was more normal. Highly recommend this foundation. I have mentioned this before. I absolutely love it for that glowy, light to medium coverage, lightweight finish, super pretty, super, super pretty, and just clean and fresh and skin-like. All the adjectives. And this color, 25N, is perfect for me. I find that it's a true neutral. Some brands say neutral, and it ain't neutral. I'm sorry. This is neutral. I love it. I did actually buy a full size of this. So that tells you I did repurchase it. And then I went through, I would say 90% of this e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I have mine in the shade Light Peach. I love this concealer as a mix-in concealer. I cannot wear this on its own because it creases like real bad on me. Now, listen, creasing's gonna happen pretty much no matter what, I get it. But for me personally, when I smile, sorry, didn't mean to flip you off. <laughs> when I smile, the way that my face is, everybody's face is different. And it's this is not a complaint. It's just, I'm just stating a fact. My under eyes like wrinkle and crease big time. Some people, when they smile, different parts of their face will mush together and crinkle, right? Mine is my under eyes. It's just, it is what it is. And I smile a lot, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna stop smiling just to preserve my under eyes. I'm not. But some concealers crease less than others. And this one creases a lot. Now, I love, love mixing this with a drier concealer like Tarte Shape Tape or the Milani Conceal and Perfect. I love mixing this because it adds a little bit of moisture to a what would be a very dry concealer, but it provides still really full coverage. So I really love this. I like the color. It has a slight peachy tint to it and it's very affordable. So if you are looking for either a mix-in concealer or if you prefer a very hydrating concealer, this is wonderful. Now, I, I do have a little bit of product left, but I did start to notice that this is smelling bad. Yeah, it smells bad, whoa. So I don't wanna put it near my eyes anymore. I I'm done with that. Will I repurchase? Yes, I probably will. I have quite a few concealers that I need to sort through first, poss possibly do a declutter soon because liquid products, I don't like to hang on to them too long because they start to smell and they go bad. So anyway, great concealer. We're almost at the end. If you're still here, thank you so much. So this is the Ilia Liquid Light Serum Highlighter. I love this as a liquid highlight, but again, I've had it so long that it's starting to get goopy and I just don't really want it. Now, I didn't use it that often. It's not something I reach for a lot, like a liquid highlighter. Again, I have more oily skin and actually I don't even really wear a highlighter that often, period. And when I do, I do really go for a powder. But if you are looking for a liquid highlighter, I really like this one. I have mine in the shade Nova, which is a really pretty just like, champagne -y gold, but it is dried out. Will I repurchase it? No, I won't. Like I said, I didn't even get through a mini, so I certainly am not gonna get a full size. Okay, you guys, and this is the big finale. I saved the best for last. I'm so proud of myself. I mean, I say I can't believe it. I believe it. I use this product literally every single day. It is my holy grail number one product. If I was stranded on a desert island, actually I wouldn't probably wear makeup if I was stranded on a desert island, but you get what I'm saying. If I had to only keep one makeup product in my collection, it would be this. And I went through an entire one. The Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. Listen, if you've been here before, you know how I feel about this product. It's my holy grail. I have severe dark circles really, really dark circles under my eyes. And this completely changed the game for me. It allows me to wear less concealer. It truly, truly does correct under eye darkness in a very soft emollient thin formula. So you don't have to like, 
It's not like adding more layers and layers and layers to your under eye. It's just perfect. It's wonderful. I like wearing it on its own. I like wearing it underneath concealer. It's a must have for me. And when I heard that Becca was going out of business, I was devastated. I bought backups and then they said they were keeping it. Smashbox was going to take it over. So I'm a little pissed because I bought so many backups, but I'm also happy because at least it's not going away. So yeah, happy to have finished all of this and I love this product. All right, you guys, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and let me know down below in the comments. Is there anything that you used up recently that you just completely used up and empty of your own? Please let me know down in the comments. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe before you leave. I do upload videos weekly, both beauty and fashion videos. And I wanna thank you so much for watching today. I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>